Hello everyone, good morning. <coughs> it's a beautiful morning here in sunny Alabama. But I'm going to introduce myself before I give you my long lovely talk that I had just recorded. Okay, <coughs> my name is Kat. I'm 22 and I'm a bartender and a recent college grad. And I am making my first video for Healthy Happy Fitness. I'm super excited about. So this week's topic is bad and disordered and or disordered eating habits. I have really run the gamut of bad and disordered eating habits in my life. Um, from like from one extreme to another, like a pendulum, I have gone back and forth between extreme binging and extreme restriction and fasting. Uh, and it was really hard to come to terms with the fact that I did have a problem. For years I was doing this and I guess I'm, I guess technically I might have known that it wasn't good for me to be doing this, but logically I was able to kind of know that it wasn't good, but emotionally I was not ready to accept the fact that I really did have a problem. And that was much ser more serious than I was leading myself to believe. I thought in my <laughs> twisted little mind that the binging was the bad part, but the restricting was the good part. And the extreme dieting and fasting were the good parts of me. Like, it was the self-control. It was the control. My ability to make up for my mistakes. Which, of course, in hindsight, seems a little bit messed up. But that's really how I was feeling, especially when I was in high school. And now that I'm out of high school, I'm finished with college, but middle school and high school are really sensitive time, especially for young women, uh, for young people in general. But I feel like young women really start getting initiated into the cult of um, dieting when they're in middle school and high school. It's, it's socially accepted too, which is kind of the, the really disturbing bit of that, but I don't, I'm not saying that uh, the extreme restriction stuff is, is socially accepted as much, but I've always been overweight since I was a young child. You know, I, ever since I was a little kid, I can remember being on a diet. My mom putting me on a diet. I just needed to lose a few pounds. I was just about five pounds ahead of everybody. Then it was just about 10 pounds ahead of everybody, and then 20, then 30, and then so on. Uh, I know now that my mom only wanted me to be on a diet because she didn't. She has struggled with her weight throughout her life, and she didn't want me to struggle the way she had with being teased and bullied for being a little bit overweight, uh, which thankfully I've never really been teased for being overweight. It's just no one's really said anything to my face so much. Uh, Luckily, the students in my area have a little bit of grace with where that's concerned, but like I said, high school was a really rough time because you're trying to figure out who you are and you've got so much pressure from everybody around you in the media, in movies, in the internet, and just magazines and everything to look a certain way. Uh, to fit this kind of golden standard of beautiful, which by the way, guys, doesn't exist. It's just an illusion. It's fabricated by people who make glossy magazines and, you know, paint clothes on people and, you know, get rid of people's cellulite and little flaws because they want to create this image of human perfection. I'm not really sure why people are so obsessed with, you know, creating perfection, but I'm assuming uh, that it's just like a I don't know if it has biological roots or not, but it's, it's definitely a social construct um, that there is one idea of perfection. And why people are, human beings are obsessed with it, I'm not really sure. Uh, but there's this perfect image. If you're, if you're skinny and toned and pale or tan or whatever, uh, then you too can be perfect. And you too can be strong and beautiful like us. And definitely in American culture, there's an obsession with beauty. 
there's an obsession with being thin and toned imperfect and you're bombarded with that every single day even the tv shows you watch the commercials the advertisements on your youtube like everywhere it's everywhere 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 and that is really hard to deal with especially when you're trying to figure out who you are and when you're 14 and 15 you you're really just starting to get to know yourself and really begin to develop your identity and you're beginning to have this idea of who you are and who you are going to be and to have all this these conflicting messages being sent to you versus what you feel inside you should be. Like your natural inclination of who you wanna be, sometimes that can be in direct opposition of what you're being told you should be. Always embrace your originality and your uniqueness and your individuality and what makes you you. Always, always, always embrace it. I would embrace part of it, of myself. I would embrace my personality. I would not change my personality for anything or anyone and my sense of humor and you know, my just general wackiness and craziness and randomness, I would not change that. But I started getting ideas of how I could morph my body and change my body into being more of what this crazy, cool, fun, random girl I saw myself as. And that girl could wear the clothes I couldn't, to wear the things I wanted to but never, never was able. And sometimes it wasn't because I wouldn't have looked good in it, but it was unavailable for me. That's one of the struggles I've had being plus size. It's getting better now, but especially in high school when there, when I really didn't do as much internet shopping, being able to find cute and trendy clothes in my size, that's really hard when you know, you're know you 16, 18, and that's the borderline. And in a generous extra large at straight size stores, you might be able to find something that you could stretch over yourself. Um, so I wanted to be fashionable and I wanted to be cool and trendy, but I was getting these messages that you're not allowed to be that unless you're thin. So I started to be like, okay, well, I'll have to get thin. Well, I would just go on these crazy diets, like just extreme calorie restriction, like the 2468 diet and really stupid things like that that I'd found online because you know there are communities of people online that like are really embracing that kind of eating and lifestyle and I mean I guess I kind of knew it wasn't good for me when I was 15 but I was so desperate that I would give anything a try well, these things would work for maybe a week or two. But then inevitably, I would be so hungry. I would be just so miserable and hungry that I'd go on these crazy binges. I would eat and eat and eat and everything in front of me. And I would just like stuff myself to fill this actual hunger. But then it would go way beyond the actual hunger. It would go to this emotional hunger, this emotional void that just seemed no matter how full I was, no matter how much food I ate, could never be filled. And then, of course, after the initial satisfaction of eating and then overeating, I would plummet. I just felt more miserable than ever. More miserable than when I had been hungry. Because no matter how much I ate, I could not fix myself. I could not fix my pro perceived problems. So then I would fast. I would go on a crazy fast. Three days, juice fast. The first three days are the hardest. I had all these craziest thing, crazy things I'd written down in a notebook, tips and tricks I'd found online. I just feel so sad for myself for when I was such, such an impressionable young girl that I was beginning to hate myself more than I ever before and this extreme dieting wasn't making it better. It was making it worse. 